Hi everyone, I'm George Leon. I'm Lauda Leon. Of Sovereign, Sovereign Key. Key Productions. And uh, today we've uh, wanted to bring up a few important topics, um, especially in light of recent events. Uh, first of all, yeah, we just want to let's just discuss the recent eclipse, which in our locality it was at 80% totality. So we went out to do some. Uh, work to negate the effects because we don't see this eclipse as a positive omen uh, just as the Sun is a life giver we see the moon representative of the life taker um, in its harvesting mechanism and its role that it has to play in that so we saw any uh, observable motion of the Sun being eclipsed as a negative uh, aspect of the celestial mechanics so we were out there that morning and and doing our bit to uh, make yeah to counter and to make our own declarations uh, against the effects which certain powers and principalities um, have intended with this celestial event. Um, and it is worth noting that the last time that there was a solar eclipse across America, um, it was the same year where the Spanish flu emerged so it is very disconcerting to hear of reports of NASA sending uh, experimental balloons up into the stratosphere mm. uh, containing bacteria uh, so when you read reports of that um, you know it is very disconcerting and so yeah we just did our bit the Spanish flu was also uh, it was a it was a manufactured virus that was vaccinated into the uh, soldiers. So when we, when we went out to this event, uh, we captured, I captured photographs. And at the time I didn't know what I was capturing because I wasn't looking at the eclipse. I was just uh, hitting the, the camera. And um, that, whole morning was very strange because there was a very odd silence oh yeah <laughs> and it was a very uh just an abnormal unnatural silence that is stranger than strange there was also something very interesting because there was um realizing that number one there was no eclipse where we were um it was too minor because there was another light there was another sun quote uh it wasn't a sun it was it was like a uh, artificial um it was like an artificial sun that was huge and it was brilliantly lighting the sky and i took pictures of it because you can see the the quote artificial sun is a lot larger than the actual eclipse and i felt that this event mm -hmm was uh, a synthetic event and it was an upgrade to the server that it was uh, this object that seemed like a sun it was huge it was huge massive it was very bright but yet at the same time there was no heat there wasn't a heat coming off of it so there was no heat sensation it was all very synthetic feeling and then we had a smell that were coming because the chemtrails were extreme. They were chemtrailing mm -hmm. like crazy. We've never seen uh, anything like it. Yeah, bombarding in um, every direction. Uh, yeah, we, we could, could actually feel the sensation of what what they were uh, literally filtering the sky with this this these nanos and all of this artificial metallic uh, substance and something else that you could actually breathe. In the lungs, we could feel it. And you could smell it. Mm -hmm. And my tongue and my mouth and my throat and my lungs, it, I started going numbish and feeling like constricted. It was, it was like I was being poisoned. I felt that it was a poisoning. Mm -hmm. And the smell was unlike anything I'd ever smelled. Now, we know what chemtrails are because they do them all the time, but this was different. This was entirely different. So we were countering the effects 
the, and the artificial mechanizations of whatever this upgrade to the server is for this next more sophisticated version of reality, which uh, is reality. It's a R E E L I T Y real, um, like a film reel. I think it's. Uh, oh, that's I guess the digital nature, the digital holographic nature of this reality. Exactly. Um, so it, the, the, the architects can come in and, and deliver their upgrades to their simulation. And I think also this is in tangent with the consciousness expansion that is happening uh, throughout the world where suddenly a lot, of, uh, the, uh, a lot of the population is able to grasp things that they were never able to grasp before. They, um, this acceleration in consciousness is, I feel, allowing the mechanics of this um, machine to uh, upgrade. Essentially, the quantum mm -hmm. machine, the quantum computer is able to then be upgraded. So the question is, is this uh, acceleration in consciousness something natural or is it something also that is um, technologically um, corralled and geared? Is it engineered? Um, is all of this engineered? Is it um, all a part of how the technology works? Which I feel a part of it is. Well, seeing as the body is like a, a biological creation, it's their so, technology. Exactly. So how how the brain can be harnessed, how how they can manipulate all the electrochemical sensations in the brain, and and this is what why we always emphasise the spirit because the body has been heavily heavily manipulated by uh, interdimensional forces, uh, quantum <laughs> forces on the quantum levels, um, and the, and the multi-dimensional levels. So this this is something where we have to continually focus on what we own and that is our own spirit yeah and and that is the control that we have that which is completely outside their manipulative uh, realm mm -hmm. and we can bridge that if we choose to mm -hmm. and this is really the whole reason why uh, we are doing this work and, and trying to expand awareness of the traps and all the myriad of lies which they keep uh, perpetuating upon the people um, and trapping yeah. people within the law um, the nature of their technology including the physicality is programmed like a computer and the hardware is programmed just like a computer the system that they have put in place in terms of you know the the spelling the language the um, the maritime law this entire this entire um, system is based on corrupting the codes so that your spirit can't transmute and transform what we are meant to in the physicality. Mm -hmm. So they have done things to intervene and stop and intercept what naturally would be occurring with the spirit to body connection in mm -hmm. the marriage. So everything that is happening is really to put a divide between that, and between your spirit and yeah, and evolution. Yeah. yeah, because the what we're capable of doing is unlimited, and it's spirit to body. Therefore, they know that our mind is what makes manifest reality. Knowing that, they know that we have the capacity to literally create health within our own physicality because it's our universe so they have created an entire system around corrupting those codes yep. and that in that link that communication that um that connection well that's right because we are here in the physical so obviously what happens in the physical does matter and this is why they go to such lengths to to deplete the body of nutrients um this is why we have gmos um, and, and all these lengths, yeah. uh, the contamination of the water, the food, the soil, this the is air. Why plastic um, is so popular. Yeah. Plastic is one of oh. the things that they know on a base level that literally goes into our RNA and corrupts the code. And alters. Yeah. And alters it. So they know that glass, glass, 
is good for our crystalline nature yeah. it's good for our essence and it doesn't cause any kind of a, um, interception back to what we were saying about um, the eclipse and it being a harbinger of of change uh, which obviously the negative powers are trying to harness towards that end and the reason I wanted to bring up um, the pandemic of 1918 its correlation with with this great American eclipse uh, there are two parallels I found in regard to and I, and I feel these elements are connected now any serious researcher will know that that the way these powers and principalities and their agents operate is that is that they always um, as part of their sorcery they have to reveal what their intentions are um, before they transpire mm -hmm. and <clears throat> And I'm speaking in reference to the movie uh, 12 Monkeys, which was released in 1995. And that, the whole theme around that movie was based around a, pan a great pandemic, um, which was deliberately engineered. And, and uh, how the main character had to go back in time, ironically, to the First World War, which, <laughs> which also was when the Spanish flu was. So interesting enough, there's a parallel here, and what I'm getting at is the parallel with the Denver airport mural, which was also uh, opened and unveiled in 1995, the same year. And that whole mural centers around war and pestilence. So, and of course, the dedication plaque put in by the Freemasons. We know that they're working on a, on a timer um, where we feel that we don't really want a date set or anything like that but we can just say that um, it's getting really really close now to what the Bible would refer to as the beginning of sorrows which is the tribulation period we're getting really close and yeah you've been nudged um, to start mm -hmm. preparing as well with um, yep. food and water storage yeah. I've never been nudged before um, uh, and in fact it was never even on my mind even though I've been shown all this from the get-go but I, I was also shown that the time and the moment that it would come out naturally for me to be starting to prepare that it would be something to take note of and um, so yeah I would recommend that people start um, Doing putting it. that into effect yeah um, there was there is some importance to like we said, we don't want to put any dates down on anything, um, and this isn't to take away the power within us in what the work is that we are doing. Uh, this is the agenda that has been in operation from the beginning, and it hasn't ceased, and it won't stop. Um, there have been certain things that have elements that have been introduced as um, X factors, like Trump. However, I feel that that he's not he's not an X factor, honey. Uh, however, I feel that that is not an X factor in the end. I feel that um, that is a part of the whole the whole plan. Yeah. Um, Can I just interject mm -hmm, for a second? Mm -hmm. Now that you brought up Trump, mm -hmm. it just reminded me of what I wanted to mention um, with the Denver murals. Okay, on the Denver murals, if you study them, you will see a depiction of a young boy who is of German descent. Now, this boy just happens to be wearing a red tie, okay? So, <laughs> what is alarming about that is that this boy of a German lineage wearing a red tie just happens to parallel with Donald Trump being of German lineage and descendancy and wearing a red tie at his inauguration. And the boy looks identical. Well, yeah, he's like, like the Trump's Aryan son. looking boy. Yes, he looks yeah. just like mm -hmm. Baron Trump. Mm -hmm. Now, these people aren't stupid mm -hmm. they know they have to put it out there but they're not going to put a picture of trump mm -hmm. out there you know 20 years before yeah it's for us to figure it uh, out so essentially it's it's the last war to put into effect their totalitarian uh, state yeah. state um, the totalitarian global, global state mm -hmm. um when i was in denver colorado interestingly enough i uh, at the airport there was only the one time i was at that airport and I started checking out the murals and I was just looking at them. So within about 
15 to 20 minutes of me looking at the murals, I was approached by two police officers and both of them took me by the arms and escorted me, gave me a choice. They said, you can either go to a coffee shop or the bar or we will take you to where your, your plane is going to be, your gate. Uh, so you get a choice, but we're going to be with you the entire time and you're not going to be able to walk anywhere. And that was out of the blue. I found it really interesting because they never told me what the problem was. I was looking at the murals like anybody else, but I was, you know, I was just looking at the murals. There was nothing no. to cause any Night kind of um, yeah. alarm. Uh, they refused to tell me anything. They basically said that the only thing that they would tell me was my choice was where to sit out the rest of my stay until the plane came, which was about four hours, three to four hours. Okay. So they sat with me the entire time. Well, I mean, why, why do you feel that occurred? Well, I feel that occurred because uh, things like that have happened to me throughout my life a lot. Uh, there's been heavy monitoring. Um, I feel that they didn't want me to make certain connections. They didn't want me... Somehow they knew who I was. Somebody there knew who I was. And they didn't want me investigating anything. And I feel as or though I would... remote viewing? Yeah, exactly. Well. Yeah. So... That's what I think it was. Yeah. They didn't want me, you know, penetrating into any of their... Um, well, the whole oh, underground base, yeah. which is... But and In which case, I was starting to because I had found a door which um, was very peculiar to me and it was down below where the metro is as well. And I, I knew that that was an access point mm -hmm. and that that whole thing was a falsity like that metro that was going through. So, yeah. you know, I think that they were trying to stop me. Oh, well, yeah, and... Uh and they also told me not to come back, by the way. Mm. So, uh, yeah, just, just not to, to come uh, back there. Really yeah. let it sink in. Mm. So they really don't want um, anybody connecting any of the dots. Uh, that, that region, also, they know that that region tectonically is very sound. Mm -hmm. So this yeah. is the reason why they chose it, in terms of when everything is going to be... Um, you know moved moved <laughs> that that is going to be a sound yeah. area um yeah and apparently the uh runway that uh, from an aerial view depicts a swastika and there's there's several examples of that around the world and this is just another one um so just to give you an idea that yeah the, the nazi movement never disappeared they just uh changed their mode of operations and went uh from overt to covert operations and the war the so-called war we won that was just that was a ploy by the nazis it was it was always orchestrated it was, by yeah by them yeah. uh so like we say this is all a game of chess and and people choose to be the pawns um but Which on, the on that note as well speaking about pawns is this, this is absolutely vital part of the reason we've we've given our uh testimony and disclosures on cloning and replication technologies is because not everyone around you and this is this is a, a really dicey area to go into and a part of me didn't even want to go there um, not everyone here is real okay and when I say when I say not real I mean that they can be akin to biological robots and programmed as such with a hive mind and not as closely connected well maybe not not connected at all to a spirit um, however, they have been implanted with uh, a programmed consciousness replicating technology. Um, with sentient cognitive abilities. So, for all intents and purposes, uh, you would have a hard time knowing who was who. Well, it's some of the most advanced technology mm -hmm. there is here yeah. on this planet, is to create that, because this is really the work of, of the gods. Okay, so, <clears throat> and and the the idea of who these gods are for the most part they are highly highly invisible for the most part more more invisible than the draco mm -hmm. well in the draco um if you want to talk about who really is in charge um in terms of this whole operation and 
the uh, internal fighting, the gods fighting themselves and each other because it's um, a dominance, a you know, a dominion, a demon, demon inion. Um, you can start looking at uh, there's different factions that have been co-opting technology and creating quote different species of humans so the technology relegated to these different factions these different demiurgic factions manted factions they have their own hand in creating their own specific species of quote human um, which is reflected in a lot of their DNA and is also one of the reasons why um, there's so many different types of people on the planet. Uh, this is really a profoundly interesting thing along with the different blood types. So the, the science behind uh, DNA and blood is one of the m most secret um, technologies and if you I mean, I find it really peculiar that it, that's one of the hardest things to find information about when you try. There's very, very limited information. There was one scientist who came out apparently on the web and he was talking about DNA and blood and how it was connected. Um, you could see it, that it was connected to, um, you know, God particles, I guess you could call it, or the God codes, um, other, other influences, not human. Um, he was shut down. Nobody ever heard from him after that. Nobody could even uh, prove who he was or if what he said was was real. Um, this is also when I was in university. I had um, I had a friend of mine who was a PhD of um, DNA sciences, uh, blood, and he confided in me and said that you know if you only knew, if you could only imagine what we what we know. There's no way that we will let any of you know anything about um, the depth of knowledge that they have about all of this. They already know all this. They're just, it's not out there. I mean, it used to be once upon a time that you could know what your blood type was and they put it on your driver's license and that stopped because they didn't want people knowing their blood type. My blood type's been changed. Um, I haven't gone into the full story about um, my uh, black alien goo blood it wasn't blood it was black alien goo uh, prior to this happening i was o negative uh, i wasn't allowed to find out what my blood type was for years and years and years until just recently which you know surfaced as o positive um, they can change your blood easily Yeah, so we wouldn't really get too hung up on uh, the whole blood type thing and whether you're an O negative and no. restless negative or positive. And again, because you know I had a question on, about that um, not not that long ago, and and that's how I answered it. I'm like, well, look, mind over matter. Mm -hmm. it, it, really, that's that's where it's at. And when I say mind, I mean the spiritual conscious mind mm -hmm. over matter, because that can transmute all. Everything. of what is pertaining to your physical evolution mm -hmm. so this is where the focus has to be and even when we speak about all these catastrophes and and their nefarious plans we have to highlight primarily spiritual preparation ahead of all okay now the reason we bring up preparing for food and water is because there's a whole there's a whole series of things planned and and the way we look at it is hey well people spend thousands of dollars on insuring their car and their home so why not insure your life? And and you can rotate your food stocks. It's not it's not money going down the drain or anything like that. You can rotate your food stocks. Uh, but most importantly, water. Okay, survive weeks and weeks and weeks without food. Um, water is a different story. Water is the essence of life. We're mostly made up of it here in the physical. And and yeah, the, I would I would be investing in uh, water filtration uh, systems and. And, uh, purification yeah, and water purification uh, means mm -hmm. and, and and just start yeah being as much prepared yep. as possible for solar uh, solar technology solar radio so solar flashlights um. yeah because th there are going to be electromagnetic uh, disturbances mm -hmm. uh, they're also going to be deliberate AMPs um, 
EMP bombs, mm -hmm. um, which will disrupt the grid. Uh, that's all part of their plans as well. Yeah. Um, uh, there's there is so much happening. It's hard to it's hard to know how to cover it all and and to disseminate all this all this knowledge and information to you uh, because there's just so much going on. It is no accident, guys, that when Trump came in very very soon after this whole rhetoric of beating the war drums, you know, regarding North Korea, um, just amplified. This has long been planned and they have the people who are not spirited people here who will join the armies, who will comply with the orders, who will function according to their program and things have been delayed but they will not be averted. Take from that what you will. I'm not trying to be a doom and gloomer, but forewarned is forearmed. Okay? Even China, mm. just last year, 2016, China unveiled a war statue and they call it the God of War. So this is all in the works, guys, yeah. and they always reveal via their symbols. Mm -hmm. Okay? So. Trump is re representative of the 666 and this is what I was shown um, I was shown and I will g be getting into um, what I was shown prior to my incarnation uh, because I wa it was revealed to me the series of events that would happen right from the beginning to the end specifically specifically and specific characters places. specific places um, events all the way up until the end and I will be getting into that in detail now Trump represents the 666 carbon reality interestingly enough I was shown also that Obama would return there would be a black president afterwards so he would go back in he would already be a president prior to all of this but Obama represents the 777 new upgrade reality system the the president that will be put in in place after trump which i you know i did see that the black president would be effective and he would be in effect as i saw him in a huge con in a huge auditorium giving a speech um that he would be returning basically mm -hmm. uh in power and it would be some strange uh, technicality that had never happened before. Um, but essentially at that point in time, there would be a, a lot of technicalities that have never happened before. It would be just a domino effect of things happening for the first time. And that would be the real, um, when that happens, that would be when the really serious stuff will come into effect um, more so. There are other seers um, who have seen uh, Trump being killed or assassinated, or taken out in some way. When you factor in the cloning technologies and the replicants, it is very easy to stage events and stage assassinations. Um, and we can also apply that even to the biblical prophecy where they say that the Antichrist figure is going to uh, come back to life after an assassination hey you know how easy that is with cloning technology yeah. child's play okay but it is the time now to be revealing that these technologies exist because again it is for those with the eyes to see and the ears to hear okay and really those with the spiritual perception well in the bible is their see. creation yeah, this well, whole tribulation the, armageddon this whole world war three um it's all there. The mind magic mechanisms yeah. and the and the sorcery spellcrafting. The other mm. thing that locks people into the system um, of corruption and inversion is that because of the mind magic, the words that are created in the languages that we speak are created in such a way uh, there it's it's locking you into that spell and that's where people get sick. That's where people accept the illness. That's where people literally lock in the programming of death, the carbon programs that seem to actually manifest physically 
onto destruction. So it's a theft of life through um, legality. Actually, You've said that it is all going according to how you were shown it. Yeah, all of it. Everything. And, and the one who sent you here, mm -hmm. when he showed you all these things, mm -hmm. he said, I don't make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And guys, I will, I will speak for myself, but I feel I can speak for both of us when, when I say that we would not have incarnated here if these events weren't going to transpire. There wouldn't have been a need for it. Well, actually, and I, I, I will say mm -hmm. that in my experience prior to being born, where I was in particular, um, there were eight of us there. And eight of us came together in a most... Um, huge colossal way we're talking eight of us were and are from different universes we only did so because there was no other alternative there was absolutely no alternative this was what had to be done but it was by far not anything we wanted to do and in fact we were hopeful that things would transition enough so that it would be able to happen consciously via people's evolution but it didn't and so this these measures this last measure had to be taken because there wasn't an alternative left and it was one of the most difficult things if not the most difficult thing that I ever recall when I came in because it was very terrifying knowing what I was shown and knowing exactly everything that would transpire and that doesn't mean that um, this isn't about people finally reaching their capacity as eternal unlimited beings it actually has everything to do with that it isn't about um, the complete and utter destruction even though the disillusion of illusions has to happen and the refining the great refining of the universe is the great fire that must happen to literally purge and cleanse and rebalance harmonically everything. So it isn't to take away the potential for the marriage that has to happen. It is actually because of that and because um, certain measures need to be taken in order to push that potential to the very max of its potentiality to exist in that marriage between spirit and body and to undo the false and you know step into the true creation um, which would require uh, not just the dismantling of illusions but also a new paradigm of existence which would be the second earth, which would be the true place where evolution actually can take place without the hijacking. So in memory, uh, one of the, it coming in, there was a huge fear, ba fear because we knew that we could potentially lose our spirit, um, that we could potentially lose ourselves inside this um, prison, inside this, uh, containment system, um, this eternity system, carbon-based eternity systems that we have in the inverted realities, which means that you're just like, go from deeper, 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 and you just keep getting lost. Um, there was a huge fear with that. And that was one of the reasons why uh, I, was, uh, I was able to keep my consciousness. And that in fact, it was vital that I keep my consciousness and that it would not be swiped because if not, it's very difficult to, um, to do the work mm -hmm. on account of the nature of this entire um, corrupt inversion, theft of your own DNA, your own consciousness, your own everything. So yep. then realizing when I came in um, that everything was even through the uh, through the my entire life since I was born, everything was going exactly as I was shown. There wasn't a single thing that is off, not one. 
there have been things that have there are a few things that have been not revealed to me obviously because not I'm not going to be shown every single thing in existence but um, everything is exactly 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 any of us have converged here for this great work that um, is about to transpire so in particular to my experience I can speak about the eight of us but I'm sure there are are a lot of other um, waves uh, of you know cut that have come in prior to that and after so it is a, a colossal work that is in parts mm -hmm. because no one person can hold all one part because if so it would be too easy to steal it uh, hijack it so I feel that in many ways, uh, this is this is done in such a way that everybody is carrying a certain precious payload, and that that payload is in conjunction with other payloads. And so when you unite, those two essentially act as an unlocking that also unlocks on higher levels other things. And and so it works in this way to protect the greater, mm -hmm. um, the greater work at hand yeah. in this all well we realize as well that in, in the midst of these tribulations um, which will be intensifying because that's how it's going to work it's it's going to be like building up to a crescendo um, there will be communities formed of the spirited because there is going to be a great divide taking place between those who fall away and those who step into their power and their potential and who converge also with spirit mm -hmm. and integrate uh, the spirit and those who integrate the spirit from what I was shown we're going to be um, manifesting those abilities that were innately and always have been in us and that have been purposefully um, suppressed through technology and purposefully um, put in dormancy if not removed because this is where the uh, DNA codes were screwed with where you have like parts of your DNA that have been removed and inserted with other other things that they wanted instead so this work that is going to be happening between the spirit and the body will be the re-emergence of what we truly are in all of that um, eternal unlimited kinetic ability of electromagnetism that we are we're going to be able to do amazing things. Um, a lot of the sci-fi fantasy movies that are being made are actually being made because of us. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because recently we went to see The Dark Tower and and we were just uh, speaking recently on how they're revealing uh, so many of these technologies and, and of course their plans. Um, but they actually showed the trip chairs and how the children are actually used as the stargates to be the stargates to bring to actually activate the stargates um, in order to travel to other dimensions and that is not science fiction one iota and we can say that because we are those children mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> which also brings me to what I was shown where um, the one of the quantum computers that is being run remember I was telling you about um, that is in Australia yes where um, this is, yeah, I caution people with what I'm about to tell you because it is, it's no light thing, it's, it's horrifying. Uh, I was shown that um, this quantum machine, which is the, the helm of the beast, that's what they call it, the helm of the beast, um, it's largely um, generated through the consciousness of these psychic children whose heads have been removed from their bodies and kept alive and attached to machines. Uh, what This is why their technology is psi technology, is psi interface technology, just like the G5, G6, G7, G10, G, G unlimited. Uh, it's like a quanta machine because it is based on sentient consciousness that mm has the capacity to not just absorb consciousness and grow but it can literally change 
and manifest physicality. So, and alter um, time, alter reality. And um, they can keep the, they can keep them alive perpetually. Yeah. Well, I guess in uh, bringing this whole topic up, um, I guess if we're going to make a, a bold statement such as us uh, being time operatives, mm. um, which uh, not only has been endorsed by Org Tellers, um, but has uh, psychics, mm. they picked that up on me. Um, I know that you're an operative. Um, the fact that we are, well, I'll just speak on my own behalf, um, because I'm a, a current operative, that means that I'm still highly compartmentalized. I do have memories of being in a jump room. Uh, it was a room that was all metallic. Um, I was holding in my hand a metal chip, probably about the size of a standard SD card. And there was no markings or engravings on it. Um, and I knew how to use this this device, I mean, this in this memory, it was old hat to me. Um, I knew exactly what to do, and I inserted this metal into a slot, and then what that did is it actually activated the walls, and they started like that in a in a sequence, in a circular sequence. But everything in that room was metal and fairly solid state, um, not like a computer panel or anything like that. Uh, it kind of reminded me of uh, footage that I've seen of you know, the, the Gravitron. I don't know if you know the, the old amusement ride. Yeah, yeah. well, the amusement, ride, the amusement ride called the Gravitron. And when I saw that, I'm like, oh, yeah, it's kind of akin to that in a sense. Um, so, yeah, that's. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone's quite described it like that before. Well, and often time jumpers are also artifact um, retrievers. Retrievers. So there's a co there's a connection between uh, those who work in these uh, in these time rooms with uh, these artifacts that have been hidden since ancient times and in the future and the return to certain aspects of technology which they really want um, to incorporate into the current technology because of the um, efficacy of their dimensional uh, portals so there's yeah. uh, a lot of the wars actually are to retrieve some of this these artifacts. One of the dreams I had when I was young, which well, takes it's not a dream. Well, it's not a dream. No, <laughs> one of the account. things. One of one of the accounts that I experienced when I was young, and this is when I was really quite young, was that, um, and this takes us back to the original history of the real history and not the contrived uh, false history. I was I was taken to Egypt. And I was taken to uh, the pyramid of Giza, and I once I got there, I was I actually met up with a, a boy who was about 12 years old, and he was waiting for me. And Tim and I were the two that actually had to go through a particular um, corridor of the pyramid that was inaccessible. Um, other the other people couldn't access this part it had to it was specific to your dna it was specific to a frequency and somehow this boy and i were the ones that had this and they knew it and they um set up for both of us to meet it in front of the pyramid and the boy and i went through and we knew exactly where this these hidden chambers uh and how to access them we knew exactly where we were going in the pyramid and when we got to certain walls we knew exactly where to touch and and a door would open that wasn't even viewable you couldn't even tell it was it was even there and when we got to the chamber that we were that we were looking to find and we knew exactly where this was buried it was the the books of time the books of history the books of the past the present and the future these books were written in copper silver and gold and each book was they were large and uh, each one of them pertained to 
either the past, the present, or the future. So the interesting thing was that the gold book was the future. The copper was the past and the silver was the present. And within these books were living, uh, was a living technology. So how these books were written using the metal. So each metal and the language within the metal housed the living history and they were living fire letters, I guess you could say. So it was a living technology. Um, and we were able to retrieve them from where they were buried beneath the sarcophagus, which was moved. And we knew exactly everything we were doing. We accessed the books and we carried them out. Now, at the time that I had this experience, the boy was 12 and I was in my um, 20s, so early 20s. When we got out of the pyramid and what, what I find interesting because this goes um, this goes back to the two creation stories as well which we want to get into a little bit um, because there are two creation stories in Genesis and the books that we retrieved basically had all of that information it had everything it had the real information when we got out of the pyramid this strangest uh, very upsetting Thing occurred where uh, a group of men that looked like uh, these rabbis, like Jewish um, rabbis or rabbis, rabbis, but no, the <laughs> ancient ones, like the Sanhedrin. They look like yeah. I mean, I had to research this after the fact because of the kind, the the garb that they were wearing, and um, the hats that they were wearing, and I knew that they were Jewish. I knew that they were. Um, like an ancient order an of Jesuits, order, yeah. an old, old, old order. They were waiting outside of the entrance of the pyramid, waiting for the boy and I, and it was a group and of them who would basically, they, they are the keepers of all of this information and they don't want this information out. And they forced us to give them the books, um, which was really disturbing to me because there was a military so there wasn't really any option that we had. There was no one we could go to. We couldn't protect the books. Um, oh, because they had their military. They had their military, and, the, okay. and their military was connected to the uh, American military. Because in the experience I had, it was an American military that took me there to the Egyptian pyramids. Okay. So they were complicit with this ancient Sahedrin order. Okay. Of so you were basically working, operating as trackers. Yeah. So they could then. Only we Use didn't you know to retrieve it. it, right? And then, and then take yeah, possession. But we didn't know that until you know that happened. After the fact, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, and that and that was what. This is how I found out what I was doing because I was being used for these operations to find these artifacts because they know that I know where some of these are, and when the this ancient order i mean they were like they look like they came from thousands of years ago but predating cross yeah well yeah predating um absolutely and in fact they had helicopters there they had everything there so literally they took the books they told us that um we were not to try and find them they told us that we were were not they basically threatened us uh, and threaten our lives and threaten everybody in our um, families if we were to tr try and retrieve those books again. And they said it particularly to me because they said, you're, you know, you're the one that... Um, yeah, could yeah. relocate it. And um, you're not to do that. And they big time threatened me. They went into their um, personal jet and, it, and, and they were escorted by helicopters, military yeah. helicopters. And the thing was their jet was right outside the the pyramid. It was like mm -hmm. close by. So this whole thing was, you know, I mean, they can do anything whenever they want well, to. They're above the law. So <clears throat> now these books, they have not universal law. They had the or real um, the real story, and I hate saying history, his 
story. I mean, this is, <laughs> it, it's another uh, spelling yeah, word. Patriarchal. It's yeah. another patriarchal, yeah. Manipulation, um, yeah. So, for all intents and purposes, let's just call it, um, you know, let's call it... Recordings of time. The recordings of time, yeah. So, in the recordings of time, it was pre pre this civilization. So one of the books pertain to the previous civilization. And somehow I knew what was in the books. Okay. So consciously I had some ability. It was like a again, right? It was a a connecting to whatever the living um uh, technology of these books living were word. of the living word and I knew it. And the previous civilization was destroyed. Now, this takes us, and they were destroyed because basically their ability to overcome all of the hijacking was so, they were very evolved, highly evolved, highly spirited, but in the body, mm -hmm. which is what they wanted to stop. They yeah. wanted to stop that evolution from happening, which is what we were discussing about Babel. Exactly. Yeah. And in the first in the first story of creation in Genesis, it's about this other civilization which was destroyed. Although it doesn't say really why. But that's why because they were um too um Well, they hit they were at an apex of their of, of evolution. Their, of their evolution. So they were li literally the manifestation of spirit to body and they were able to transmute everything at a high rate so all of these demiurgic powers the all of these the lords uh couldn't have that time chronos all of it couldn't have it so that civilization was wiped out and they wanted to create a more dummy down version yep and and this is why when when you read the accounts of the bible of the lord uh saying again right in the plural saying let us go come down yeah. and you know yeah. Elohim guys this is this is a pantheon mm -hmm. a single God so yeah. you know if you actually read the Bible and study it the idea of um, confounding the language and scattering the people was all about altering the DNA mm -hmm. and then everything else. relocating the people which I'm sure would have been done through a series of disasters mm -hmm. again and them coming down in their crafts mm -hmm. okay because this is all about these these lords of advanced technology which mm -hmm. could do that mm -hmm. so you know it's when you dig deeper and deeper and, and it really does open up a whole new inner standing of of what is operating here and these powers and principalities are going to show themselves um, on certain levels again uh, during these catastrophes and it is going to involve part of the um, alien what they call the alien crafts and the whole ufo setup yeah. um, which many researchers mm -hmm. and whistleblowers uh, are still promoting mm -hmm. um and you know the, again be very very careful and i've given parts of my testimony you've given parts of yours mm -hmm. there is a great deception mm -hmm. uh coming and most of the world they say is going to fall for it so and this whole i mean it's important to note that this um this language dispersal where everyone suddenly couldn't understand each other and that's what it yeah, says. Yeah, exactly. Like, how, how would that happen in any logical no. sense? Like, oh, hang on, we all speak one language yeah. and suddenly we can't understand each other? No, you got to, like, look yeah. through the metaphors. It's all DNA. And it's, it's... And the corruption of the code means that basically they were corrupting, quote, your God code. I mean, I don't like the word God either, but they were corrupting your God code genetically so that you couldn't reach the stars. It's what's happening now. Yeah. And this is the Atlantean agenda. It's the Atlantean Nazi agenda. It's the same thing. Cycling, yeah. repeating, repeating itself. So this they why don't you want saying. you to reach your godhood, your godhood. The personal don't. ascension. Um, so, and on that note of space. Um, Water. Let's, yeah, well, let's just say this. Uh, NASA, mm -hmm. your, your university, uh, and educational institutions have been lying to you about the size of the sun, the distance of the sun, uh, the moon. Um, okay, I'm sure a lot of you have woken up that yes, the moon is 
an artificial construct. I can say what I've been shown. Uh, that moon is going to come really low uh, during the Star Wars. People realise that it's actually <laughs> can be, um, you know, just Driven. like yeah, exactly right. The aerial shot you see of a satellite um, above the stratosphere, well above the stratosphere. Okay, this is where they have a lot of these satellites. This is where there's a lot of crafts that are cloaked. Uh, when you see uh, objects coming from the sun, uh, that's because the sun is a stargate, the sun is a portal. Uh, that's part of its designation, is to be a portal. People think that, oh, these ships which are photographed were what looks like ships, and when they're photographed um, with the sun in the background, oh, this ship must be like the size of the earth. Uh, again, no. It's because the, sign of the, the, the size of the sun is not what you've been taught. Okay, so yeah, these ships, in comparison, uh, it's a lot smaller because the sun is a lot smaller than, than what you've been uh, taught to be leave, you know, be the live Eve. And this... Serpent's lies. This reality system is based on mechanizations. It's actually based on just technology. Celestial gears. And just as I was shown what the harvester looks like and it's um, it has a, a bunch of wheels and a bunch of um, the gears from the old technology clocks this is much like the technology that is utilized for this realm realm we're in a realm it's not um, it isn't what people think it's not and the brain has been designed to perceive according to how the designers want you to perceive yeah. the matrix and until we're able to return to our true perception outside of time and outside of all of these uh, artificial constructs we're just going to be perceiving and having to battle through perception as per the nature of the technology aka us and this realm so a lot of that is just to consume your energy and to derail you from the real work that needs to be done. Well, this is what this is why we keep discussing that everything that that is put out in the media mm -hmm. is always to get you to choose a side and to and to debate and argue over an allotted side. So, okay, we're going to tell you that it's flat and it's round. Now, go battle. Yeah, yeah, it's, right. It's the duality. This is exactly. Yeah. And, and look, we, we are in a in a realm where there is a law of opposition in all things. This is why, you know, whatever, day, night, hot, cold, yeah. bittersweet. Yeah. This is, this is how it is by design here. Mm -hmm. Although information is helpful, there has to be a recognition that there can't be an obsession for information either. There's, this, that is the Ouroboros, by the way. That is the, um, the trap because you will always be led into the next thing into the next thing <coughs> but you won't ever get anywhere you're basically eating your own tail in a in a very uh, Alice in Wonderland go through the rabbit hole reality uh, of inverted world so a lot of what everybody is experiencing in even their consciousness is really designed to eventually get them to the place where like we were speaking about, they can start to disengage from all stories, all narratives, disengage from all information, disengage from all of this. Just disengage. Because this all is a trap. Information is a trap. If it enhances you so that you can disengage and therefore internally return to your power base and your foundation, so that you can begin to truly step into what that authority and power is and that sovereignty, then that's great. But if you find yourself continually just chasing yeah. information... Well, uh, the way I see it is, is that deep down, even children possess within them the most profound truths, you know, what they need to, to get them to graduate, so to speak, from this realm. Mm -hmm. um, it, Obviously, it's it's what the true words of of Isa, the Christ did, espoused. Okay, love one another. You know, do unto others as you will have them done to you. Okay, it's a lot of this is common mm. sense stuff. But yet, when you look at the world today, you know, it, it seems that well, 
for one, common sense isn't so common. No. And, and secondly, yeah, people don't seem to love their neighbour in many ways and, and people have just lost sight of where their priorities should be. Well, and a lot, yeah, a lot of this has to be a return to just pure life and living. So not, not all of the other stuff mm. that consumes you. Yeah. It just, it's the basics. It's returning to the basics of compassion, but not enabling, okay? There's, there's a big difference between yeah. empowering and enabling. Yeah, and, and by the way, yeah, we, we did mention in a previous video that we wanted to provide um, some productive... Um, Helps. Yeah, advice, uh, especially regarding recognizing setups yeah. and setups, yeah, from basically, mm. you know, our, our youth and our infancy uh, to, to adulthood. So we've, we've drawn up a working sheet and we're just going to, uh, yeah, sort of fine tune that a little bit and, and do a presentation on that. Um, and again, and it's just to help us recognize the setups mm -hmm. and then establishing yeah. our boundaries, which is all part of uh, protecting our sacred boundaries mm -hmm. and our and sacred our space yeah. and our sovereignty mm -hmm. and, and applying our power so that others don't run our lives for us mm -hmm. and, and dictate terms to us, whether it be parents, whether it be governments, um, you know, whatever, all, all these, mm -hmm. all these mechanisms of, you know, ETs, so to speak, or aliens, uh, you know, and being at the mercy of, of their will. So as to be able to navigate through this uh, in a much more successful way where people are not feeling as victimized and that they can start stepping into their ability to transmute everything because although these events that have been slated to happen from thousands of years ago in this great plan um, we still can transmute the energy around us in our own reality in order to navigate through this reality so that regardless of where the agenda began, whether it's the Demiurge, the Mantid, whether it's the Reptilian, the Drac, uh, the Gods, it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. So the point of this is, is to return you to the point where you can begin to transmute your personal reality, your personal life, both internally and externally. And that, and step into your power, step into your um, manifestation yeah. and yeah well um, just to um, wrap it up I just want to I just want to close off with an account of you mentioning that we've been placed here at our personal safe zone and I say that in a relative sense because that doesn't mean that that there isn't going to be a potential struggle because it's going to be difficult everywhere um, hence why we've been nudged to prepare with the basics such as food and water stocks uh, lanterns things like that just the, the essentials <clears throat> um, I want to give an account of an experience that I had over a decade ago uh, which at the time I thought it was a dream but given our involvement in in these time projects uh, and given the fact that we have a f benevolent family which is overseeing us uh, and, and knows knew everything that we were going to face uh, in opposition here and in the ways that uh, we would have to endure uh, terrible things in attempted hijacking uh, and whatnot. Uh, I was shown a field and this scene was unfamiliar to me at the time and it was eerily deserted, this field, and it seemed like there were some buildings in the distance which felt like it was a school and, and the impression that I had in this short scene is that it was a time of war and a significant war and that enough that people would have been displaced um, except I knew that the, the war was being fought overseas but it was a major war and that it had gone nuclear and when I say nuclear 
I will divert just for a moment because I, we have both been shown specifics in that and I just want to say that because the, the hour is late I, I don't want to mollycoddle too much even on certain details they will be deploying low yield tactical nuclear weapons um, and at the point in this scene that I was showing where I knew that there had been war that had gone nuclear it was on that level um, they will be closing borders during that time I was shown celestial signs in the skies that will be appearing um, some will call it the Planet X system uh, I was shown that though we also have to be careful with what the Bible refers to as the signs in the Sun and the moon and the stars because holographic technology will be also deployed uh, which is a precursor to the Antichrist kingdom being set up because they are to artificially induce their kingdom before the real disillusion and before the kingdom the true kingdom come so but what I was getting at back to this account so I was shown this this field and this scene and and I was walking through this this eerie landscape and uh, I didn't recognize it at the time until now um, because this scene is literally across the road from where we live now so guys the, the time is getting closer and uh, we're giving these messages out as, as an alert and foremost spiritual preparation before anything the flesh can pass away but the spirit if you tend to that and you and you hold that path sacred the spiritual path which the material will fall away in many ways so if your priority is collecting money or houses cars if that's your priority and your focus then hey this message probably won't resonate with you anyway but if it does on some level focus on what matters live in the now also don't these messages are not so that people live in fear and live in the future to be robbed by the present live in the present enjoy every everything you can actually truly begin to have a really amazing time transmuting energy around you because it is um, it's spectacular to do this it's spectacular when when you realize that everything is a frequency and an energy and all of these events that that are contrived they're all engineered artificially so none of them are none of them are truly real they're real but they're not real so yeah beyond the illusion you know there's a balance between uh, again right the information and just what you bring into your sphere your personal universe so because that's where you can alter exactly. time and space and through your vibration and through what you choose to um, give Other. life to you know don't uh, entertain mm, the things that are imprisoning you you can do the preparation you can do all of the things that that I'm doing that we're doing with a light heart and it's not a it's it isn't that it's affecting you negatively it's just you just are prompted you do it that's it and you enjoy you yeah. enjoy everything you, rem you remember remember your power is in the mind body spirit connection that it's a brilliant brilliant opportunity 
in the universe and you are the universe so this is this is something that is profoundly amazing <laughs> friendly fella and uh you want to be on and TV. just like that it's that exactly. is amazing see yep. this is this is what it's about there you go little synchronicities like that i love them yes you know and with that <laughs> with that um yeah and and uh actually one last thing for those who because a lot of people are making money out of this whole prep thing okay the most vital resource is food and water okay there are there are many preppers which are which are um gathering their gold and their silver mm -hmm. and you know what that's going to work for a time mm -hmm. okay but without saying too much uh, let's just say what the bible says the silver will be scattered in the, in the street worthless and the gold will be taken mm -hmm. okay so it's mm -hmm. happened before don't think that they're not going to confiscate again. again because they will they will all right and so, in fact a lot of what they're going to be doing with the gold and making it um cheaper to buy is because they really want to collect as much as possible so well it's not cheap right now but but usually what like happens the is future. they create the dips yeah and then right after the dip yeah. it shoots up rapidly exactly and then that was yep. the whole orchestration yeah. plan um and and that's the thing this these so uh, just do a little yeah. research um you know do the do what you feel prompted to do with yep. a, a light heart remember to enjoy every moment that that everything is energy and you are energy and everything is a frequency and and what we create are all frequencies so you choose which frequency you want to create because that's what's going to manifest yep and that's the whole thing i mean you we're not going overboard even with the with the prepping no. <laughs> side of things because we also realize that uh we we know inherently that we have a guidance with us um from the benevolence and side. maybe start uh, doing some exercises with your kinetic abilities start doing exercises with energy start exercising that muscle how well there are many things that you can do uh, you can you can use a candle to begin with and see if you can move the flame you can see if you can actually start moving something like styrofoam is really good to work with you like um, my flame honey <laughs> and uh, um, there's a whole lot you can do. Uh, iodide, potassium iodide is really good actually for you. Um, and uh, there's just certain things that, uh, that are here to try and, and stop the glands, the psychic glands from operating, which is the pituitary gland and the pineal. So there's certain things um, that you can do to actually help you along and start exercising those muscles and uh, so you can become accustomed to using your uh, abilities in energy because everything is energy mm -hmm. we're going to be realizing that in the future with all of these things that are about to happen and i'm going to get into this more um, later is that we're going to be creating these energies energy weapons energy um, shields and we are doing that now but yeah we're going to be creating that and that we're going to go into that i'm going to go into what i've been shown with regards to that later yeah, i'm going to also discuss further about the metal god and um and those living technologies that are um associated with the metal god and what i've been shown there um with everything that's happening as well so this uh, yeah. this it's is gonna uh, be interesting yeah yeah. Um, but but ultimately nothing to fear because we are more than the flesh anyway so we're not to be married to the material world or the flesh um, but but, but we are our, to do the work in the, in the our, flesh exactly but our role within mm -hmm. that and that is where the work has to come pertaining to so, spirit yeah. we will end with this it's uh <laughs> we, like, we will end with this is he gonna give it up <laughs> we will end <laughs> He's like, no, I get, you ain't getting it um the the work has to be done in the body so the spiritual work that we're really doing has to be done through this medium in that great becoming so it isn't and it can't be done 
once you've expired and mind you expiration expiration is uh, a false construct death is a false construct disease is a false construct none of these things truly genuinely de exist um, our DNA is meant to regenerate consistently uh, all the time so hmm. for those that can unlock exactly their, their and, and we will be walking in that more so when we um, when we're you know when more meta <laughs> yeah when we're more meta um, which is where we're going so because because this is how it works everything has to be maintained in, within this duality realm everything has to be maintained in a form of balance so if they for example if the negatives up their agenda to an extreme then it is allowed for us to then have our beneficial protections enabled and that's what's going to happen for the many who have chosen to remain conscious mm -hmm. against all the forces and the weapons formed yeah. against our estate, yeah. our spiritual estate. Life is beautiful. You gotta say it like Roberto Benini. Life is beautiful. <laughs> Remember, be yourself. And life is beautiful. Yes, and you're beautiful. Remember.